Okay. So, uh, welcome you all interested in Bootstrap 4 for Jumbo. Um, it's about, it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit about Bootstrap 4, it's a little bit about templating and a possible workflow to, to get this thing going. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, we, we just started. So, um, very short introduction. I'm Frank, so married, have a great daughter. I really love Jamla. And I'm interested in fa fast websites, which is also one of the reasons why I got a little bit more interested in Bootstrap 4. And I'm a performing strongman. So, don't do this if you're just working on the keyboard. Yeah, so just... And also, I wear glasses, so my nose is pretty hardened up. So, why did I pick up the task of getting Bootstrap 4 running or, uh, for Jumbo? Come in, come in, come in! I normally do not bite, and I already had lunch. Here, front row is still appreciated. Go. So, I had the feeling when I did some comparisons that I felt somehow Bootstrap 4 was a little bit faster, leaner and that appealed to me when I had to, or wanted to redesign my website. So <coughs> what you see right now is version 3. So you see a lot of code there, which is just targeting. Yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in. I just use the opportunity to get a little bit more coffee. I mean, if there's one thing developer cannot get enough of, it's coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so you see there is a whole lot, bunch of code, which is just there for, for make it accessible for all Internet Explorers. Here you see the same code about for Bootstrap 4. Small Comparison side to side, yeah. You see, it's just it looks cleaner. It's more organized, and so that's the reason why I decided. Okay, I want to give it a try, even though nobody does it. Yeah, you ask yourself, what's the thing? Yeah, just this was one of my favorite things while I was doing the coding. Dropping old Internet Explorers. I know there are a lot of sites out there. This is not an option, but I got a little bit more niche sites or people just using high end browsers, so I really had to jump on the opportunity just to say, well, this is my site, and actually, I do not want to have clients which are using old Internet Explorers. Just think of it. Customers who are using old Internet Explorers, most of the time, they do not want to change anything. Yeah, it's more just an alibi to, to, to have something. Yeah? yeah, I have because everybody has it, but yeah. But it has to work on my old browser, which even not my customers are using. So, getting rid of old standards and things uh, is actually a good thing. Come on in, come on in, I do not bite. Ah, great, cool. I was hoping to see you. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. So, quick re uh, re uh, recapitulation. Um, I was um, go settling for Bootstrap 4 because it's getting older, uh, getting rid of a lot of old stuff. Like, for example, old Internet Explorers, which are pain somewhere. 
So major differences. The first I mentioned, so it's focusing on modern browser and modern browser technologies. They dropped a lot of stuff like uh, uh, um, icon fonts and dropped a lot of things uh, which seems to be uh, connected with Bootstrap uh, 3 um, panels, thumbnails, welds and they have them all merged into the concept of cards which will be coming to later on and there's no more less there's only thus yeah? so which is basically not that bad yeah just if you're just very focused on less on your development it will just take about yeah maybe half a day to, to adopt that to thus yeah, it's a little different concept, a lot of similarities, because basically they, they do the same stuff. Yeah, just don't be afraid of a different name. And something which appealed to me, they changed from pixels to RAM. So, um, anybody here is uh, familiar with the uh, uh, pixel and RAM, the difference? All short? Okay. Uh, pixels is defined from from the web browser. Web browser. So this very thing here is one pixel. So, but this depends very much on the device that you have. So, sixteen pixels may be very very big on an old monitor, but they can be relatively small on some modern phones. What RAM does is kind of a re, a, a, a relational proportion to the size of the screen. It's, it's a little bit more like percentage, so which makes it a bit easier. But percentage has a, a difficulty that you have to all keep it up to 100%. RAM is just a little like a percentage but in relation to the whole screen. So at the very first, it's a bit hard to, to get hold of the sub, uh, uh, on the concept, but it works very smooth once you've got a bit working into it. And the nice thing, it adopts smoothly to all devices. Yes, so, so there's really not much hustle to it. Which I like. It has a clearer structure, so it seems to be focusing more on the essential part. In Bootstrap 3, you have, for a lot of functions, a lot of JavaScript. In Bootstrap 4, it's a little less JavaScript and more modern CSS and HTML5. And I guess this is also the reason why they uh, dropped a lot of concept to make them work for uh, old Internet Explorers. You can still do this with external libraries, JavaScript write libraries to help old Internet Explorers, but um, I did not check that thoroughly through because And Bootstrap 4 is still work in progress. We are talking about Alpha 6 right now. Okay, that stays the same, small list. Don't worry, you do not have to take any notes with it. Later on, I will have a um, page that you can go to where you have the HTML tables and just uh, have that as a resource, um, which is gone. Yeah. So all these, all these things, buttons, drop downs, diff icons, labels, media object, page header. I mean, page header. Who needed that anyway? Yeah? It's just. Um, so they dropped that altogether. Don't worry, you still have the same functionality, but it's not really separated. So, what's new? Buttons and which is very uh, big is cards, which will be uh, coming on later too. 
So you here got the whole thing. You see some red, some green, a lot of gray. Gray stays the same. So no really no big using that. So boots are four cards. So cards can be used for nearly everything. This is the most, I say, it's kind of the, the layout joker. It's a way how to organize stuff. So basically everything they dropped, they put into cards. And so you have there the possibility to have everything which you want in your way of organizing things. So I got a lot of screenshots right now. So very basic way of organizing things. So you got an image, you got a, a small title, some teaser text and a button to click. Yeah. So this is going to be organized by cards. So you've got also do possibilities to, to, to in, and even navigation is a card right now in Bootstrap 4. So really they, they, they just dumped everything which is about organizing content into cards. So and immensely uh, nice stuff which you see in, on, on all different pages. So um, they got a class here for just emulating a picture which is gray and says uh, the picture dimensions and then you can put just an overlay over this. This you can see here this is easily done with the card concept. So everybody knows from genre front page uh, blog articles or something so they are very nice ways to organize this. Yeah, so so this is very nice and, and if somebody try to Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Very cool. That's cool. And <laughs> then a lot of times you have uh, problems with a layout. So making here the columns all even if you have different text can be sometimes a real pain. But with the card concept, this works easy, out of the box. Sadly, not with templating out of the box, <laughs> but we come to that later. later. So you have also um, these concepts here that you could do for, for front page, but um, this is still alpha. I was just uh, uh, checking into it because I wanted to make it work but uh, I did not have enough time to actually make this work for generated genre content. Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot what you could implement more. So some <coughs> live usage. So this is our website, diviso.de. And now you see here, this is a card. I was too late with the thumb, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and here you see a group of cards just there. So here, this is also a card, which I basically told you before, yeah. So they, they just merged everything into cards. Just know the content article, here's also a card. And before you do the templating, um, you have to have a, a developer server um, or a local server running where you can test things. You should have a code editor. So this is nothing new. So everybody who's doing templating does that already. And it would be advisable to have a little knowledge of GitHub, at least how to get uh, the basic code of Bootstrap 4 down. And uh, you should have also some experience or working SAS compiler. 
there are several ways to, to, to work with SAS. Um, first, what SAS does, it takes all different kinds of style sheet information from different files and merges it together into a single file. Okay, nothing too dramatic, but which it already does, uh, you can use variables to use all over your style sheet codes. So you just say company red and then you can use company red in different areas of the style sheet just to reuse that again. Yeah? And if you um, decide, oh, mm, the company red is a little bit too dark, we, we want to have a lighter red or brighter red, then you just change the variable and just hit it through the compiler and then you got new generated style sheets and everything is in bright red. Um, it has semi-functions. So this it takes a lot of pain uh, away from having, yeah, for example, borders and stuff like this. Yeah, so um, um, at all different kind, um, kinds of areas you can have borders and these have to be found in a very certain way, sometimes also for different browsers. And this will be done by mixins. So it, it's, it's a little bit like a function for style sheets. Yeah, so there's really much advantage in using SAS. Any questions? No? Okay. Relax. I have to talk here. Relax. <laughs> so, which I personally like to use is CodeKit. This is an app which does all the work for me. Yeah, so here I got a main file which pulls together all the different style sheets files. And at the other side we have there a couple of neat functions. <coughs> so I can tell uh, what my output style, I want it to have it compressed or I want to have it nested, I want to have debug information in that style sheet which makes it longer there. Yeah? But most of the time uh, it works very good because if you did something dramatically wrong it doesn't compile and you get an error message. So that's the normal way which I do it. And here I can set also an output file. Yeah? And this is the, the output file is the one which I'm um, pulling in with the template. Yeah, with my custom template, uh, I tell them, use the merged file, that's it. Which makes it also very nice for uh, getting different things into um, my template and just have one single, single CSS file. GitHub. Okay, uh, when you go to the Bootstrap uh, page, then you want to make sure that you hit the download source because if you hit uh, <coughs> download bootstrap, you get the CSS files, and not the S CSS files. Yeah, but this can be easy. So if you just want to play a little bit around with bootstrap and do not want to check out the um, SAS compiler, just then go to download bootstraps. But if you want to go more deep into it, and if you actually want to do real templating, I seriously advise you to, to get the source files. Um, okay, or if, if, if you know how to use Git, you just could clone the re repository or use some other package managers. Mm, does this general <coughs> structure look familiar? Yeah? Okay, so I called it BS4 Diviso because Diviso is my company. And so this is time for me, that's my Bootstrap 4 template. Which is maybe catching your eyes. I have there a folder which is called Assets. The thing is, Bootstrap 4 is still alpha. 
and some other libraries which I'll be using, like Iconoon or Font Awesome, they also change. And I want to use these um, most of the time with the latest version, so I just want to be able to, to pull it off and inject the new version in. And that's my, my tiny way to do this, just to have the folder assets. <coughs> so you see the merge, uh, uh, merge style, CSS. And right now here, I tell which different ZUS files should be included. And these ZUS files, for example, if you have here the Bootstrap 4 Alpha 6 Bootstrap, includes a file which includes also several other files. So it's just branching off like trees. Um, so here we're also using icon moons. I got I wrote my own class for social media colors so that I have small uh, variables that I could use uh, for showing uh, Facebook blue, Google Plus Red and stuff like this, which makes some of the coding a little bit easier. Okay. So here I got my alpha version. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, there, uh, there was an alpha 5, and I updated to, to, to alpha 6 right now yes, to, to make this work. And so it's very nice to I just include one file. Um, at the time, I had both directories there. And I just changed the SCSS file, which says one time to load the five, and one time to load the six. And so I could see if I was up to everything. Yeah. Um, anyway, there was a major improvement in stability with the um, upgrade from 5 to 6. So this is still work in progress, but it seems to be better and better. So there you see my other, so, so I got my icon moon fonts and the SCSS files there, and also jQuery and Tether. Tether is being used for um, popovers, stuff like this. Okay, there you have the SCSS files, and this one is using all uh, the SCSS files from Bootstrap, which will be pulled into. So here you got the everything, the small components of which Bootstrap is created. So you see import cards, uh, type, and everything, images, yeah. If you want to get a leaner code and you know uh, I do, I'm not using images, you're free to, to comment out images and this will not be then included into your uh, general composed uh, CSS file. So this is a way to make things leaner if you know you can really drop something. Yeah? If you would make just a text page, then you would make just use uh, the SCSS file, which is uh, for uh, resetting browsers and uh, formatting text. So you can boil the whole code down if you want to. Most of the time I find it's not worth it doing it. Yeah, but you could. <coughs> So, new version of Bootstrap 4 is out. What do you do? Right. Yeah, so. And this was also when, when 6 came out, I was just like, oh, fuck. I gotta do it all again. But here's the good news. They introduced a new subfile for custom changes. And this was new from 5 to 6. So somebody with some practical knowledge there just introduced that and this is really, really neat. So basically, 
you have a variables SCSS file, which is declaring here things that will be black, red, orange, primary buttons, uh, whatever colors. Uh, also, uh, grid sizes, um, font sizes, and everything. And it's very, very hard to keep that up if you change a couple of things. Because after two months, you have, this is very, very long page, uh, the variable very SCSS file. And if something changed there, you're just, uh, oh, wait, you, uh, what did I change? Uh, yeah, colors, we changed your colors. Later on, you find some of the font that looks different. Yeah. <laughs> what did we change? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, then you have here, you see, that's a custom SCSS file. And then I can override the colors. Yeah. I can just make my new ones. There's an important thing because in the custom SCSS file you have to drop the um, default which took me some hours to, 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 to get that into my head and to understand this if, if you're using the custom SCSS file um, and you are redefining an already existing, var uh, ex existing variable you have to skip the default if you create a new variable, then you have to put the default in there. Just an example, here I overrode existing variables and here I created new ones. So, so the primary colors uh, uh, of my brand are dark blue and a kind of gold. And so I created a new one, Diviso Blue and Diviso Gold. There you have the default. Yeah. And another nifty thing is there are some a general decisions sometimes when you're building a website, round corners or not. In Bootstrap for, uh, 3, you just could set round corners to zero. With Bootstrap 4, you got here things like enable, enable rounded fails, and that's it. No more round corners. And this is really nice. So, um, Bootstrap 4 has been really, I, th I, th I think, more developed for people who are actually working with it. Yeah, just. So, now we're getting a little bit more into uh, details. Okay, if you want a template, it's good if you have a basic idea how this works. Yeah, so which files belong to a template, <coughs> or which folders do I need, stuff like this. Um, you should know what template overrides are. Yeah? So you could use a basic template which is already relying on, say, normal bootstrap, say, protostar and just clone that and then just get rid of bootstrap 2 and inject bootstrap 4. That just as, as a way of, of getting started and to have the basics files. You will still have to change a lot of things and you have to know what content overrides are because you will need them heavily. And it doesn't really hurt if you are familiar with J layouts because a lot of the Bootstrap 2 stuff is in the J layouts, and if you want to have some things working, you have to, to overwrite core functions of Joomla with the J layouts, yeah? Which is important because your, your, how say, um, your work should not get lost if Joomla's got to be updated. Yeah, so this is reason for a couple of things to be, get familiar with the JNL. So I told you cards everywhere. Um, this is a default article from a web page. And so I just took the normal um, 
tem it, a default template from the content and then change everything, um, all the CSS file and the structure to make it work for Bootstrap 4. Yeah? So here you got your card blocks, blah, 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 blah. Most of the things work relatively easy. And uh, do not worry, uh, the site will be there even if the Bootstrap 4 things are not working all properly. Okay, um, I would advise you to, to write your own style for the modules. Yeah, so you got the modules PHP and then I would write, to write your own functions for creating modules. And what I did here is I created one which says uh, BS4 module. The reason is when I am in the, the template, uh, in, the, in the module itself, I can select here, please use BS4 modules to apply the style. Because now I applied something like a card for a module. But maybe I do not want to use it everywhere, just in some areas. So this is the reason how I can select things. Here's an example. Here we've got a module, normal rendering. Here, I just defined it from the style as Bootstrap 4 module with a function. And it looks completely different, fits the style, everything. So I would suggest um, if you go into this, uh, write your own custom functions in the model, module to, to, to get that. Also makes it easier to play around. Just reset the style, mm -hmm. okay, it's not working, then you just always have the, the, the basic function to go back to. Mm. Most components will just work, but do not look too great if, if you did no templating at all. Sadly, um, navigation itself will require templating. Yeah, to make the uh, to make the navigation work, you will need to uh, work on the menu to make it render correctly in Mister Form. Override. Hmm? override. Yes, override. Yes. So, just wrap everything up. So. What's pro for using Bootstrap 4? The changes that have been done um, seems to be implementing more and more easy. So from 4 to 5 to 6, the changes to implement them were easier and made it more stable. It's a GitHub and open source project, so you can get involved and you have the source files and you can just fork it and do whatever you want with it. Um, you can use your own icon fonts, yeah, which is pretty easy to implement. Um, remember, please, the talk or uh, the, of the, the keynote talk we had before about accessibility, because this was also new for me uh, that you can you make also icon fonts accessible with the role image, of course. Yeah? So this is very interesting. Um, the structure itself of Bootstrap 4 is more essential and I was far easier for me to, to grab a hold of the concepts than with the older versions of Bootstrap. But maybe this is also just the case because I've been working longer with Bootstrap and so it's getting, getting also easier. But it appears to be more logical to me. And, okay, sorry you came here, <laughs> because uh, Niels is taking a, uh, talking about Joomla X, which is basically um, making the, I see, the views, the views indepe um, independent from the CSS framework that you're using. So if this is got to be 
more productive, um, you just could use any CSS system you would like or any framework. So, and then Bootstrap 4 implementing for your site will be very, very easy. So there's a lot of things which are coming our way, which could be really, really great for developers. Okay, Contra, it's still alpha. No old Internet Explorers. I do not know if this is um, important for some of you, but for me this is not always a disadvantage because um, that sounds a bit mean. Sorry. Don't worry. Did you break it? No. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so something which you may want to consider. Um, to have your site accessible is good. But with old Internet Explorers, um, you are neither ex ex more accessible nor does this normally attract the clients you really want to have. Just consider this. And if you want to really integrate everything which Bootstrap 4 has to offer into your template to make it look nice at every detail, it's a time sink. But this will be any template where you're really watching for details. Yeah? And the more you test your page and give your page to other people to test it, the more they will also discover things and you re-emerge. So it's, it's like really um, like an old carpet that you have. And the, you hang it over and you bang it to, to get all the dust off. Yeah? You can always bang again and again and some dust will always get off the carpet. So always work in progress. But I think as you are here, you all understand that websites are not a finished product. This is just a way of going on. So my conclusion, yes, you can use Bootstrap 4 for your Jumbo site. Uh, it does not implement right out of the box. But I've been running that for two years. Or nearly two years. Yeah, so... Um, and I'm not that smart. If I can do it, you can do it too. Yeah. Um, so, and with the information you received here, it will be very, very much easier to start off. Um, personally, I would not go back with my sites to, to a norm, normal bootstrap because I really like the idea and the concept behind the new version. But this is a personal de uh, decision. Yeah? With enough work and enough templating, you can make everything look great. Questions? Yeah. How did you handle the JavaScript stuff like uh, tabs and um, you no know, like with um, HTML script files which generates the tabs and uh, the boots of JavaScript stuff? So, how did you move this to Bootstrap 4? Um, at first, uh, I just let my JavaScript loading, so, so, I, so I use my uh, jQuery and my JavaScript versions that I wanted to implement and I for, forbid loading of uh, other JavaScripts. No, I mean um, some components use the PHP stuff, Joomla you have the JHTML helper classes to load stuff like, um, you know, like JHTML slider and JHTML bootstrap popover and these are the bootstrap two calls. Um, 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 some of the thing is still working and a lot of things I did not implement. Yeah, so so um, I do not have any uh, slider for um, my, 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 my site. Yeah? Um, I got um, 
how do you say it, um, strap line banners, but no sliders. Yeah, so, so this was also a decision I did not want to have too much moving stuff around. Yeah? Does the front end editing work with your template? Um, I have not tried it because I always work back end. My, uh, my people in the company work just from the back end. Mm -hmm. And so. I just, I just, just cannot tell you if front end editing does not, it uh, does work. Of course not. Uh, but, 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 if, okay, this, I never, I, I never do use front end editing. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why I just. I was going to ask the same question. Um, previously done like Bootstrap three, Bootstrap three, front end templates, and you know, like the back end Bootstrap two, you know, just little things like on the editor box, the tabs that are on the top. Yes, uh, the, the nice thing is I just have a, f a, 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 fr a, 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 yeah, a front end template and so I do not have to touch anything from the back end to make it beautiful. Uh, this is something which I've just been using from, for myself and most of my clients, they do not edit their stuff. They just say, oh, we got a new text here, please. Uh, make the text nicer, select some images and put it on my website. These are my clients. So I can use back end editing. <laughs> okay. I think, uh, how many layouts did you have to, layout overrides did you have to write? Mm. I don't know. There were, there, were, there were several. But the thing is, I think I started off with just a content view mm -hmm. and of course navigation and then later on I saw something which I did not like and I said, okay, just, okay then I also take uh, modules in and I take contact forms in and stuff so it was a, a gradual addiction to mobile strip form. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? One last. In the picture with a pack of cards, uh, did you bite the? No, 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 no. I ripped. I pinched it out. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but normally this is something I do not do for shows because the pinching out takes a little longer. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's it just it's a nice way of practice it. Your hand strength. Yeah. Okay, if this is all, then I uh, thank you for your patience. Um, have a good time here. Bye. I wasn't. Wie viel zu früh bin ich fertig oder?